All right. Let a few more people get in here, but we are back. Some interesting things and scary things going on. Uh, TLSA continued its downward path all the way down to $4. It actually held $4 support a little bit. I am still in this like a maniac. But I am ready to hop out at any second if $4 cracks. It's kind of got this descending triangle pattern on it, which usually... What's up, Daniel? What's up, Dom? So, soon, so it is very possible that $4 could crack on this and this could sell off pretty hard. But I'm waiting to see. You can see the downtrend line right there across all these candles i'm waiting to see if it's actually going to pop up out of this descending triangle descending triangle and see if it has a reversal so we'll see let's see what happens there see enz enz's been a nice slow climber all day not too bad could be a possible play uh, HTBX started waking up a little bit. It's been slowly climbing back up. Trying to see there's a downtrend on this 10 day, 30 minute chart here as well. And HTBX is trying to break back across that downtrend now. And then AIM started to make a U shape and then it's kind of going sideways some more. I did grab 50 shares of AIM. Just because I've seen this pattern right here a million times, and a lot, most of the time, you usually get a continuation rip. Even if today this is all it does, this little candle, the next day it, it's usually like gaps up in the morning and then goes on a nice run. So I'm most likely going to swing. It's only 50 shares of AIM, but yeah, I'm most likely going to swing AIM till tomorrow, unless something crazy happens today. But We'll see. And right now, though, my concern is, like I said, we're at the tip of this descending triangle. So I'm wanting to see if it's going to reverse, have some type of reversal here and start slowly climbing back up. Or if it's going to crack and me possibly lose my ass on this. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. Like I said, definitely don't want it cracking $4. This is the first candle on the 30-minute candles that is a little bit green right now. Of course, there's still plenty of time for it to turn red. So let's see, did they just come out something? Uh, I mean, that's not, it says the rallies on development of potential coronavirus uh, treatment. So, I mean, that's the same press release, basically. I don't know what they're rallying on. But maybe, maybe if this can reverse here, $4 was the bottom, and this can reverse here and get out of this descending triangle here, you know, it might have a, might have a chance because we do know it can rip dollars if it starts getting volume into it right and there's not really been much volume since it's been on this sad slow descent but like I said if we can get if we can get out of this descending triangle and actually have a reversal start you know there's there's a possibility maybe in another hour and power hour we might have some momentum on this maybe And of course, my whole thing today was waiting till lunchtime because that's when the rips were going to be. And I did see that, uh, uh, what was it, uh, B BKYI, I don't know where, there it is. I did see that it went and made a nice move uh, during lunchtime. But it still wasn't one of those big rips. Like, what was it, uh, is AIM Monday had a nice big rip for lunchtime. And then AYTU yesterday. 
and then uh so i was thinking the day we were going to get that real good lunch rip i mean bky was still a good rip it wasn't like it was not a good rip it went from you know 150 up to 230 but it wasn't one of those big big moves that we've been having during lunch it wasn't a, it wasn't a two or three four dollar ripper so we'll see what happens here in the next two hours power hour market's been crashing all day too there's another thing spies down to 275 actually below 275 so it's it's gonna be interesting, I think. That is gonna be boring. One of the two. <clears throat> so I mean, TSL it, it did just come up and got up in the 450 area, but this candle, this candle has to close over this reversal. Until this gets over over this downtrend line, then it could still crash out. So. And I said this morning this was a risky play. Just because the way the stock moves. BKYI starting to get some life again. Okay. And HP, HTBX dropping back down to 70 cents. <clears throat> so what I've been seeing kind of today is, is it looks like there's a lot of uncertainty in, in traders. Like day traders, swing traders, shorters, everything. It looks like there's a lot of uncertainty the way that s stocks have been kind of coming up and then coming back down. And, of course, that could just be the, you know, the market being so volatile right now. But you see TVIX all the way up to 271. And this is what I've been watching and why I keep saying I don't think the market is done crashing because I've been looking at the TVIX on this 10 day 30 minute and you can see TVIX has been bullish this whole entire time. It's not slowed down any with its with climbing, so whereas the spy is kind of spy's the opposite way. Spy's been going down and continually going down. So I I, I really do think we've got a little ways away to go before we get to the bottom of the market. But TSLA, TSLA trying to come back alive here, so. I'll, I'll tell you, down here at $4, I was, getting, I was getting real uncomfortable and real skeptical. And like I said, until this candle closes above this downtrend line, it's, it's not over yet. Like, it's not, we're not out of the woods yet on this. But it is nice to see it finally start popping back up some. Let's see, where, where's AIM at? AIM 417, okay. IBO is another one uh, with some potential. Looking at it on the 10-day, 30-minute, it stayed above the 200 the whole entire time till here, and it dropped down, but it's coming right back up to the 200 now. So I think if we see us cross over the 200, this could start moving back up in the next couple of days. Let's see, BKYI. Yeah, BKYI kind of fell off that trend line. And you, and you still kind of maybe adjust it and put it on it and keep it on the trend line there. But you kind of, kind of, yeah. Yeah, this could be the trend line. Because this would be the nice balance point, so. Could come alive there. And there was something else. I thought I saw. No, maybe that maybe that was it. But yeah, AIM 
Hey, I am still kind of just doing this little sideways thing here. So, so some consolidation. But yeah, right at this moment, I think the big thing is whether or not uh, TLSA can close over this triangle. See right there, a little pullback. The ask is still at 460, but there you go. Bids came back up again. That's what I'm saying. This stock moves so can move so quick one way or another that even though it's rebounded 60 cents here in the past. Uh, like 10 minutes that doesn't really mean anything so you can see on the five minute it's, it's kind of above it but like I said I don't know I don't feel like we're out of the woods yet on this not until this triangle is done So, maybe a little bit boring for the next 45 minutes until power hour, but who knows? We could get some excitement somewhere. There's enough potential plays where there could be some excitement. But until then, we just got to fill things. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I kind of, I'm kind of, kind of there with you in life on that, on that sentiment. What you're saying, only like I said, the only reason I got in AIM, I AIM, uh, is just because the main thing is this pattern I've seen before, multiple times. So we got about 15 minutes before this candle closes. A lot can happen with this stock in 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, it could be below $4. And it could also be above the VWAP in 15 minutes. I don't think it's going to be that high in 15 minutes, but we could see it crack. If it could get above 450 and start holding 450 support, BKY, I closed over the VWAP. Let's see where you at, BKY. You talking about on the five minute, maybe? Yeah. BKY could be a potential play. I would have rather gotten in down here though at 150 on this bounce on BKYI. That would have been an ideal entry right there. That bounce off of the trend line. It looks like it's trying to start going though. And this is a, this is still a slower time of the day. One, or two to three, can be a, a slow time. A lot of the volume probably won't come back into the market until three. Ooh, the spy's getting getting down there. Right here is right here is where the spy gets super sketchy. 
right at 273. If it gets down there at 273, you could see some crashing happen. Some big sell-offs. BKYI is looking pretty good, though, here. Got some buyers in there at 185. Are you in uh are you in this one life? Did you hop in BKYI again today? Let's see our HTBAX back below this 200 day, or not 200 day, but this downtrend line again. Still having some issues going bullish. Let's see, AIM starting to move back up a little bit, yeah. AIM starting to build higher lows. So still potential on AIM. Don't, don't count it out and, unless it drops below $4. Yeah, I am starting to come alive a little bit. Whew, and the SPY is about to crack 274. So the SPY is getting real close to those those sketchy levels, about $1.30 away right now. We'll see. The, mar the market looks like this, so I don't doubt that it could possibly start cracking today <laughs> I do like that we are getting over the five here or the not the five the downtrend line on the on TLSA but still like I said this candle has to close over this because if it starts getting downward momentum, starts getting downward momentum out of this descending triangle, it's gonna go. Pew. It's gonna drop down hard. So that's why I keep saying this has to close above this downtrend line. It's a signal of that reversal. Because it's still still a little sketchy right now to me. Oh, AIM actually popped up to 445 here. So if it can break 450, get above the VWAP, we can see it probably start getting some attention and start climbing again. And it looks like it might try it. There is some selling at 450. I can see it there. <clears throat> But I'd rather see AIM keep just slowly making this nice U shape it's making up to the five dollar mark until power hour. <laughs> yeah, I saw a lot of the NBA and a lot of the sports events and stuff are going to be played without audience or without uh, fans in the audience, whatever you want to say. Yeah, no fans. So that's pretty interesting. No, it, I bet people with season passes and things like that, I bet they're pretty upset. I'm sure there'll be some some drunk a-hole who'll be there like, I paid for these tickets, I'm sitting in here and watching this game. I could see that happening.
So he actually, looking at it on the 30 BKYI, uh, could still move. So this candle's still on this trend line. So you could get, you possibly could get another big candle here, maybe. So there's still, there's still several, several, op several opportunities in the market currently. The bid actually up to 470 here on TSLA. Bid up to 475. Bid up to 482. We're slowly climbing here. Let me go into the five minute on this. See what we're looking like. Back above the nine. I think if this I think if this starts getting back over five dollars, we'll start seeing some attention come in. Cause I'm sure traders have been watching it die all day and then now all of a sudden we're starting to get some a little bit of interest in it. And it looks like, well, it was almost up to five. So it was at 494 on the bid for a split second. And the spies down in that 273, Well, we got about we got about five minutes for this uh, candle to close. So we want it to close in the area that it's in or higher. We do not want this getting back down to 450. Let's see an AIM. And you know, AIM still, still trucking along. It did have a quick little pop, but it's just just trucking along. That's fine. I'm okay with that. HTBX still in the seventy cent area. But today so far, HTBX has been trying to push the, for this reversal. We had this big move in the morning, drop below, started pushing here in these two candles. And then even that candle hit there for a second. So I think HTBX will get that reversal maybe in po maybe power hour or after hours. A little bit of an upper shadow on BAKYI there. See, it did. The market did test that 273 area back here, but this was in after hours, and it's a lot more effective when a, when these crack 
when it's during actually open hours. So if it cracks during open hours, that's when things can start getting weird. So I don't think we've touched five yet. I don't I don't remember seeing five on the well maybe it did. Uh no it didn't. I don't I, we saw five on almost up to the ask for a second. But I wanna see five on the ask just to see how much selling is there to see if it'll be possible for it to break out of that. Um, normally I wouldn't, but Monday we saw AIM go on a big rip midday, and then yesterday we saw AYTU go on a rip, uh, big, uh, during, go on a rip big during midday. See right there, you know, this was lunchtime for AIM, and AIM actually ran all the way into after hours up to 875. You know, it didn't do anything back here in, in, pre-market and in the first part of the day this big rip came later on and then same thing with AYTU you see exact same thing AYTU didn't do anything in the morning here and then midday you got a nice big move up there so that's that's why we're doing that's why I'm trying to make these late trades and swing trading and stuff because we're getting We've been getting these really big rips. Uh, n now look at look at uh, AYTU here. If AIM does what just off of this candle alone, but AOI AY man, I'm losing my mind here. AIM and AYTU on the yearly chart kind of looks a little similar. And actually, AYTU's got the 200 right here at 140. So tomorrow, AYTU might be a be something to be in play. So let's see. So that candle did close over the uh, triangle. So that's a good sign. But we do want 450 to hold up. We don't want this to drop below 450. And it looks like it's going to. So. Well, you got 30, about 30 minutes till power hour. But in normal market conditions, no, I normally would not trade during lunchtime or uh, during power. I mean, power hours sometimes is pretty good, but still, normally I would only trade in the morning. But we, the way the market's been, you know, those big rips have not been in the morning. There's been small, quick rips, but I'm looking, I'm look, I'm swinging for the fences right now, trying to catch one of these on a big rip. And yesterday I swing, I was swinging on the fences and held. Uh, what was it I was in? Oh yeah, AYTU. I held AYTU most of the morning and then sold when it was pretty low. And then it had that big rip. Like it started moving back up like five minutes after I sold it. So 
I missed. I missed. That was that would have been like a a possibly an eight hundred dollar uh, win on AYTU yesterday if I would have held it longer, five minutes longer, for it to start reversing, but I didn't. So today I was trying to do the opposite of that, of that and hold TLSA all day, but it's not worked out yet. TLSA still in sketchy areas, needs to get back over five before I think it can start moving and it's not quite got there yet. It got right at five and then had this quick pullback, but it's still not power hour yet, so it's still, still a little early. Well, yes, I'm trying to make one million dollars on one one trade. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to... Uh, that is insanity to even think you can make a million dollars in one trade. Unless you're investing, you know, 10 million or 50 million or something, then yeah, you could easily make a million. But on the levels that I'm trading on with these small accounts, I'm not going... I'm not going for a million dollars, but I am trying to get some big wins. Like I keep missing big I keep missing these big wins by just like just like a hair. And it's driving me nuts. Like it's one thing it's one thing if I'm just being a bad trader, which a lot of times I am a bad trader, but it's one thing if I'm being a bad trader and I'm just losing, but a lot of these trades I've been up on and then I'll either hold not long enough or I don't lock in profits quick enough on some like it's just been it's just been back and forth. I've been on all these stocks that have been ripping and I just can't get the timing right. So Like I'm trying to get there. And, pre and predictability has been a little crazy in these market conditions as well. But like, yeah, my, my issue is a timing thing. Which, which, for the most part, has been one of my biggest issues since I started trading is my timing. My timing's always just a little bit off, one way or the other. And we really do not want 450 to crack on TLSA. We want that to hold up because we want this to keep climbing up. Right now it's still, it's not climbing. It kind of stopped right there at $5. And it's just kind of mad right now. So we need it to get over $5 to show some strength. Until it does that, it's still going to be extremely sketchy. Let's see what BK, BKYI looks like. And BKYI looking pretty decent. Got a bounce off the trend line there. A little bit of a trend line touch and bounce. Oops, that's HTBX. Where'd AIM go? There we go. <clears throat> so yeah, AYM here building building some higher lows. Mm. 
Hmm, AHPI. I was actually looking at this earlier on the 10 day 30 minute. And it's been, it got below the 200 the past few days and then it started making its way back up. You can see it popped above right there. And it's a, it's went about a dollar thirty, well actually a dollar fifty so far, maybe a little more than that. And spy getting down there, it's. You see, the spy has been dumping all day. I think we're going to have another drop in the market. And normally, we have a small drop, even in a good market. We still normally have a small drop on Fridays because a lot, a lot of people don't want to hold it over weekends. And right now, or at least swing traders don't want to hold over weekends but right now um just lost my train of thought oh right now with the market being so crazy and not the uncertainty of whether it's going to come back up or drop nobody nobody any investors probably are going to be holding much over the weekend as far as swings so I think we could have a good drop over the weekend. But of course it all depends on you know what they decide to do to help with the coronavirus and all that stuff. There's there's so many variables right now. This election is wild. Like if you guys have watched the Democratic debates or any of that, it's pretty wild. Biden getting his sister and his uh, mother confused, or sister and his, or what is it, his daughter and his wife confused, or something like that. Uh, and then Biden saying, "Don't if you <laughs> if you're if you're gonna if you're not gonna vote for me, at least vote for the other Biden." Oh yeah, I'm sure shorten. I I know how to short. I just don't like shorten. I feel like shorten is pretty risky, but yeah, in this market condition right now, yeah, shorter, shorters are having a blast because it it's pretty easy to see some shorts, see places to short at. But yeah, I don't. I'm not a big fan of margin, so that's why I don't short because I don't have any margin accounts. But yeah, if you're if you're shorter in this market, you're having some, you're definitely having some fun. I'm gonna take a look at, at some of the bigger stocks. Let's see, let's look at my tech list. E. So let's see what Facebook. Yeah, see Facebook's getting close. We're we're getting to a exactly short the high a day. Yeah, dude, it's it's pretty. It's not too. It's not too difficult to find things to short. But yeah, you can see Facebook is close to cracking these levels as well. <clears throat> Let me put AMD on this list. I think it's in one of my other lists. AMD actually rebounded a little bit. Interesting that AMD, it did 
drop with the market, but it hasn't dropped quite as hard as some other stocks. Let's see, BKYI. BKYI is starting to try to break the VWAP here. If you're looking at that. Let's see, E and Z. Mm hmm. NZ got held up by the two hundred three dollars. See, IBO is coming back up to the two hundred day still slowly. Exactly. That's a good way to put it. That was a very good way to put it, Daniel D. Shorting shorting is way more can be way more expensive. With shorting you can lose money you didn't know you even had. Like your money in your bank account, your house, your car, they're not safe when you're shorting. You know, if you're on a margin account, they're 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 not safe. That's why I, I just am not a fan of it because you can argue that you use tight stop losses and all that stuff, but like, what if the one time, you know, your computer decides to blow up or your phone cracks or whatever you're trading on and uh, that one time you short and you didn't get a limit or a, a stop loss in before the stock started ripping and your computer or whatever crashed and then you find you go back you get on there like 30 minutes later after you go buy another computer or laptop or you go to the library or whatever you do and you look down at your you look at that and see that the stock is ripped you know fifty dollars then you know you probably you probably better go pack your stuff up because it's the broker's going to be coming for your house at that point. Like, I'm fine with risking the money that's in my accounts. I have no problem with that. But I'm not risking any more money than what's in my accounts. <laughs> Just in case something cataclysmic happens. That's, that's how I feel about it. Because you can be the best trader in the world on margin. And just, all it takes is just one time, one time of your internet going out for some reason, your electricity getting knocked off because of a wind gust, like multiple, multiple things that can happen, that do happen, that's happened to me while I've been trading. You know, the stock market can get halted like it did Monday. Like, you just never, never know, so it's just a lot of risk. You can't, you can't control the weather. You can't control uh, faulty electronics. You know, so that's, that's, that's how I think about it. Yeah, and then a margin call, they can force you to sell your position. <clears throat> Will I explain how to not pay credit card? You're going to have to elaborate on that a little bit. I don't I don't not sure what you mean. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what you're trying to say, and I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Daniel, you got to explain now. I'm trying to figure out what you mean. I'm not exactly sure what you mean. Are like you talking about how to pay? How to not pay a collection? 
Because there is a way to not do that. I can tell you about. Yeah, shorting on Robinhood and the systems down. That's a great example. Yeah, exactly. That's a great example of your broker going crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that, that exactly. That's a great point. That was a great point. That nails it right on the head. Yeah, do not pay credit card debt. Or, or, uh, is that what I said? Is that what the title says? Do not pay credit card debt? Well, what I, what I explained in the video and what I meant was credit card debt that's in collections. And what you can do, see, a lot of people don't know how this works, but I'll explain it to you while we're waiting around here because this is a bit of a process, but it won't take that long. <clears throat> Let me get some water here. And I have done this method before. <clears throat> When you are uh, late on a credit card payment or something, you know, a hospital bill or whatever, and it goes into collections, the company that you owed the money to actually sells your contract to a collection agency. The collection agency, and actually they auction it off to multiple collection agencies and they bid for it, but usually they sell your debt off for like a fraction of how much your debt was. So say if your debt was $500, they sold it to collection agencies for like $2, okay? And when that happens, that's why the collection agencies hound you and they're like, pay this, pay this, or they, they'll be like, oh, can we settle? Let's settle, we'll give you a settled price of $300 because you owe 500 and you're thinking, oh, cool. You know, that's $200 off. Not really, because that's how they make their profit. You know, they bought that contract for two dollars, so they are going to then try to sell it to you or make you pay that debt at full price if possible. Now, yeah, the only thing you have to pay back is taxes and student loans. But now, here's the thing: once they sell that contract to the collection agency, the collection agency doesn't get very much of your information. They can't really. You know, they can't buy the information, I don't think, legally from the companies. Like, they can get your phone number, you know, and, and address to send you bills. But, you know, they I don't think they have access to your credit reports or anything like that. But anyway, once it's there, it's in collections. If they call you, don't answer the phone. If, they, if you do accidentally answer the phone, don't acknowledge that you are that person whose the debt is because you don't want to talk to them. When, if you never talk to a collection agency, then there's no proof that you owe that debt because they didn't because you don't owe the collection agency the debt. You owe the company the debt, but they sold your debt. So technically you don't have to pay that collection agency and it will drop off I think after like seven years. But you can what, what you do to not pay it, as long as you haven't talked to them, as long as you have not acknowledged that it's your debt, you can go to Credit Karma or you can write letters to whatever uh, TransUnion or Equifax or Experience and say that you have no knowledge of this debt or however you want to dispute it. You can say that you, you didn't, you didn't, you don't know where this debt came from or whatever. But there's multiple options you can do, and I explained it in that video. And they will remove it from your credit report. So as long as you, as long as they don't have you recorded on the phone saying that that you owe that debt, then you can dispute it and have it removed. Like I said, I've done it from I done it with my wife's credit. There was she got two or three things removed from her credit by doing that. Doctor or uh what is it? Hospital bills or something like that. Yeah, I think it was hospital bills. I've been trading for like five years. Uh it sounds like a long time. Sounds like I should be an expert at it. But in truth in truth, I did. I've not traded five years straight. I had the first couple of years was trying things out and then taking a break and then trying things out, taking a break, uh, trading pot stocks, things like that. So I didn't really, I didn't really sit down and start doing it every day till about probably at this point three years ago. And then even in that time frame, sometimes I would take like a month break, something like that, just because 
I would start trading bad, and then I would be like, well, I just need to step away for a month, do some more research, uh, paper trade some more, and just learn more. And you're always learning. Like that's why I don't, I don't, I don't like it when these guys, a lot of these guys on YouTube, and especially your Facebook ads that are like, I am a master guru. I have these strategies that work, and I've made millions of dollars, and I can teach you everything you need to know. No, you can't because as a trader, you're always learning new things. You know, because I've only been trading five years. This this market crash thing that's happening right now, it's new to me. I mean, I, I've I've read up a lot about you know market crashes and stuff like that, and that's why I keep saying I think we still have quite a bit uh, a ways to go. I don't think this is the bottom. I could be wrong because I have no experience with actually being in it. And you can learn everything you want to learn. Like you can read every single book, watch every single guru, watch every single YouTube channel. And until you're actually in the markets trading and getting that real-time experience, real hands-on, you, you're not going to be able to learn everything. And even then, you're still going to be learning things. There's all The market's always adapting and changing, so you have to always be adapting and changing. You can't, you can't learn one thing and say, I'm going to use this one thing for the rest of my life. It might work for two or three years. It might work for 10 years. But then all of a sudden the market crashes like this and now things are a little different. And a lot of the big rips have been during the day, you know, at 1230 during lunch or two o'clock or power hour or post market. Like things change. <clears throat> I don't have spreadsheets. Um, I'm not a big spreadsheet person. A lot of a lot of my trading and stuff, I, I I don't really look back on it that much. But plus, most of my trading, the trading I've done in the last six months, I have video footage of it because I do live stream my trades every morning. Or if I'm doing a, a midday stream or late day stream, I have footage of all my trades so I can look back and and see what I've done wrong or see what's working and what's not working. And that's basically all you're using the uh, spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I don't know why you put that in cap in capital letters, uh, Daniel B. But because it feels aggressive, that feels very. That's a very aggressive comment to be mentioned in sex and trading. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's why humping chihuahuas, man. That's what you are. You're a feisty little chihuahua, man. But anyway, yeah, back to the credit thing. I see Daniel B. had another comment about never miss a payment. You never missed a payment, but. I'm telling, I'm telling you right now, me personally, I know it. even if I kept spreadsheets, it still wouldn't like. I don't know. Like I, I, have, a, I, have, I have a hard time like keeping up with spreadsheets and putting the numbers in every day and stuff. Like I do a lot of different things besides, you know, just trading and time is time is your most valuable asset. So for me, instead of wasting, you know, some time out of the day, typing some things in some spreadsheets, like I'm not knocking it. If it works for you, that's great. Like, do what do whatever works for you, but I'm just telling you, me personally, I know I am not going to keep up with a spreadsheet. I have spreadsheets of of self employment taxes and all kinds of other stuff I have to keep up with. I really don't want one more spreadsheet to have to worry about when I when I literally have all my trading in live uh, footage with my actual thoughts. You know. It's really nice, actually, to be able to look back and see what I was thinking at that time, why I thought a stock was going to rip instead of writing that out and the prices. I can see everything that happened. So to me, it just doesn't, it's not going to help me by using spreadsheets. But by all means, if it works for you, go for it. So, 
We're almost in power hour. You got about three minutes. And uh, TLSA on the daily chart look like a looks like a gray stick right now. It's like one big long candle wick, which I really don't like at this point, but still gonna try still gonna give it a chance to see if it starts getting over five. It's holding up in these areas right now, so we'll see. See where AIM is. 425, 425, still kind of making that U shape. Like I said, it, it may not do too much today. It may be tomorrow before it starts ripping. IBO still getting close. And BKYI still on this trend line. So you can just keep riding this trend line there. No, not 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 Ben Guru. That's one thing I've never done. I've never claimed to be a guru or a master of any of this. All right, guys. I know quite a bit. I don't know everything. And what? You guys, you guys can pick on me. It's fine. I'll take it. At least I'm honest. I mean, come on. But, hey, if you, if you have a problem with the way I do things, then I can't do nothing for you. I don't know. I don't know what you want. I don't know what you want from me. Like, I'm my own person, you know, if, if, I'm not the greatest trader after five years. I'm not the greatest trader after five years. It is what it is. But keep it up. I love it. I love it. Talk, talk crazy to me. So it looks like we may be getting possibly over five dollars here. Okay, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, I I can be lazy. That's fine. <clears throat> I mean, lazy lazy is a good word. And HTBX slowly starting to come back up to that downtrend. <laughs> I, I know, I know. I'm a, I'm an idiot. I'm the worst trader on YouTube. I might be the worst. No, I can't say that. I was gonna say maybe I'm the worst trader in history, but you know, I've never shorted the market and lost my entire house or anything like that. So, or like that. Uh, uh some of y'all may have never not. You may have not seen this, but I saw this post. It said this old guy in Florida tried to short Tesla when Tesla was back at like five hundred dollars. And he like read some investor books and stuff like that, and he was like just knew that Tesla was gonna crash, so he like bet everything on shorting Tesla, and then he ended up losing everything, and his wife was divorcing him and all that, and he I guess he went crazy and was like driving around throwing turds at people out the window or something like that. He went crazy, so 
I definitely, uh, I definitely don't think I'm the worst trader ever in history. <laughs> I've not got to the point to where I've wanted to drive around throwing turds at people. <laughs> but yeah, I kind of think one might's right. Like, it looks like TLSA might be getting some action here soon. We might start getting spicy. But we gotta get over five. Until it gets over five, that's that's the spot. Everything is debatable. That is a good saying. I like that saying. Yeah, that's another. That's kind of true too. I mean, keeping a spreadsheet, TD Ameritrade kind of already keeps a spreadsheet of your trades for you. <laughs> let me let me ask you this question, Adeline. If I've been if I would have been keeping spreadsheets the past five years, okay, so we go from now back to 2015, what in those spreadsheets, what in those spreadsheets would have predicted this market crash that just happened? Or that's continuing to happen since we're under 273. What in those spreadsheets would have told you? in the past five years, that this right here was going to happen. That a coronavirus from Wuhan, China, was going to come out of nowhere, <laughs> get everybody sick, and then wreck the whole entire global economy. What, what in those spreadsheets would have told you that? I'm just curious. From the past five years. Now, maybe if you had spreadsheets from Black Monday, maybe, but that's another random event in the stock market. The point is, you can collect all the data you want to, but the stock market doesn't do what you always want it to do, regardless of how much data you have and how much you know. That's why there's not one single trader who's 100% successful, because you are going to lose one time out of 10 times on your perfect pattern. Your perfect pattern is not going to work. Like, you can't. Like, data is good. I'm not knocking that. Like, it's good to have data, but at the same time, like, if that's all you're relying on, then, I mean, that's, I don't know. No, no one can predict the future. That is the whole point of what I just said. Spreadsheets, spreadsheets, i tell you why that, spreadsheets I think are good I think spreadsheets are good for newer traders and in, even intermediate traders like me like I'm not going to put myself up any higher than an intermediate trader but like all you're really using the spreadsheet for is to learn from your past mistakes but once you learn your lesson on one of those mistakes like for instance the first time when you start trading and you get in up here at $10 in pre-market because you think this is going to rip to $20 and then it crashes down, then you can look and say, oh, okay, I made a mistake. That's what was wrong. I got in way up here when I should have been in way down here. So that lesson's learned. How many more times do you need to learn that lesson looking at those spreadsheets? You know what I mean? So it's, it, spreadsheets, I think, are very good for new traders. New traders, I think, can learn a whole lot by keeping the spreadsheet. And, and I'm, once again, 
if that's what you like, that's that's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with keeping spreadsheets. I like I said, just me personally, I'm not a fan of them. Yeah, yeah, the the spreadsheet can help with patterns. Yeah. I I don't think I mean you, you're not you're not wrong, but I don't think I don't think spreadsheets are a need. I don't, you know. I don't think it's something. I don't think it's something that is that big a deal. So. All right, let's take a look here. We're getting in the power hour. <laughs> this oh. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't uh, I, I don't disagree that spreadsheets are bad, but me not me not keeping spreadsheets is not the reason why why I'm not that great at trading. Like the my my main issues, I know what my issues are: emotions and timing, and both of those kind of go coincide with each other. The emotions can affect the things that I do at certain times, which can mess up my timing, different things like that. But my, my biggest issue is emotions and timing and a spreadsheet is not going to help me with emotions and timing. It's all, that's all mental. That's all, you know, in your brain. <laughs> I, w I wish you could have put that meme in there. That would have been great. This is a this is a great stream so far. But yeah, no, I I know I know my issues. I'm working on them. Let's see what was that? Let's see HTBX. It's TBX right here at that Yeah, that's for sure. It definitely is between the ears. What? What is, what does that mean? Danny, you got you got to stop putting these uh these these statements with sex in them in all caps, like keep putting them in all caps, it's so aggressive. Oh, speaking of aggressive, see how aggressively the spy starts dropping. Cause we're almost, we're getting down pretty low here. So this is we've reached a new low. We have a low here on the ten day thirty minute, but as far as the one you get out of here. As far as the uh one year chart, we're at a we're at a new low. And T V I X up to two eighty two. We might have to keep an eye on the spy if the if the spy starts dumping off. I mean, it already is kind of dumping off, but 
if, if it really starts dumping off, we might get a halt. I think, what is it, the first halt is 7% down? Is what they said. But we're running on a we're running on a forty five minute forty five minutes left of the market being open and it's starting to crash right now, so there's a possibility that we can see the market really start dumping off here. Let me read some headlines. Did something come up come out here recently? Let's see. Lost quite a bit. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's uh, yeah, two seventy, two seventy twenty seven is the definitely the last line of defense. That's where it's gonna get sketchy at. I mean, this is already kind of sketchy in itself, but it's gonna get real sketchy if that breaks. Hmm. Wonder how red the market looks right here. Oh yeah. TLSA at Still in that 460 range, not doing too much. But this drop right now, this we're getting into real, real sketchy areas. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is this is sketchy. Like I don't know what I don't know. Like you, we, like I said, if that if that area cracks, like we we cracked that two seventy three area and we're dropping. But the question is, how hard are we gonna drop out of this? And if we crack another support line at two seventy, then it's really gonna drop. See, let's see how much this is bothering. Yeah, it's made BKYI has cracked its trend line right there. Codex has came down. A lot of things look like they're coming down right now while the market's coming down, the whole entire market. AIM down to 405. So I'm a little down on this one, but like I said, I'm going to swing this. I think, I think this is going to probably rip tomorrow. Starting to bounce back up a little bit here, but I don't think that's going to stop it. Wow. 
We'll see. We'll see what happens. This last little bit of the market. See if uh, anything gets any moves. Or if the market crashes there. It's back up to 272 now. But <clears throat> I, think, I think we're going to see the market move down lower this week. The rest of this week. I think that's a good possibility. <laughs> I mean the spreadsheet it's not the spreadsheets aren't a bad thing. I know what he was trying to say. I know what he was trying to say. And like that's that's like I'm not I'm not mad at him for tr just trying to help and suggest spreadsheets, but I don't think spreadsheets are that I just don't think it's as serious as he was trying to make them sound. They're not gonna they're not gonna magically help you become a better or be a better trader just by keeping spreadsheets. At least mentally anyway. Like the men the mental side of trading is a whole different animal. You you can have all the numbers and statistics and all that that you want, and if you get scared out of a trade right before it rips three dollars, because you just you just have a, an emotional issue with some trades, then you know it didn't really help with all the statistics. But that's why I was saying in my case, because in my case, spreadsheet's not going to help my, it's not going to help my mental issues, that's for sure. You think it, it, eh. It may it may bounce today off of 270, but like I said, we're going into the weekend, and usually the market has a drop off on the weekend. So that's why I keep saying, you know, I think we're just getting started on this. Let me look at a. Let's see. Oh, that's ugly. Monday, Sunday. So you can see here, Wednesday it was up, and then Thursday dropped, and Friday dropped, and it dropped all the way through Sunday. Oh, this is actually this is actually a good chart to see this on. Let's see how bad it is. And then, uh, whoops, what did I do here? Okay, so I had that drop there. And then we move back a little bit. And then you can see Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And it did rebound a little bit over the weekend on this weekend. But normally for Thursday and Friday, like I said, it has more of a sell-off. Just naturally. Even going back. Well, I don't know if I can see it. But here we go. Yeah, so you can see here. Thursday and Friday sell off. Thursday sell off. Friday with a little bounce, then drop during the weekend. So let me change this back though so I can see what's going on. There we go. They we usually have a natural sell off towards the end of the week. So the fact that it may be starting today is a little sketchy. Yeah, that's good advice. Continue with trades that show a profit in trades that show a loss. Some with some good good words of wisdom. Let's see. 
HTBX still not breaking over this reversal. It's still trying. I really thought this morning after I had this big rip, I thought it was going to get a lot more today. Today's kind of been weird. But like I said, I think I think a lot of it why today is weird is because investors are probably expecting this. They probably saw this coming. See AIM down a little bit. So we got, well, we got 30 minutes, a little over 30 minutes before market. Huh. That's a strange email. But yeah, 30 minutes before market close. Okay, whoops. I had, a e I had an email about a, a bill, and I was, it's kind of alarming, so I had to check it. Now, it could be possible. We could see TLSA, uh, TLSA sell off here at the end of the day. I mean, it did get a little bit of reversal, but... It hasn't really been doing too much. Woo! And the spy is getting real close. It's getting real close to that 271 area. Or that 270 area. So give me a minute here, guys. I'm going to go plug my phone in because it's about to die.
All right. Ooh. So TLSA is selling, selling off a little bit here, and SPY did bounce back up. Nothing really doing anything. Let's see PLAG. PL. Did this? Was this? What am I seeing here? There's no volume on it. Okay. But this has moved all day today. There's volume. Yeah, it's barely had any volume, but moved from about 269 up to $4. See how, how low did this get? It got down to 270, 270, 74. So it'll probably, the market will probably bounce here a little bit in the last 30 minutes. And then it'll probably pop up. But yeah, TLSA looking pretty bad. Pretty bad at the moment. Yeah, your live stream was great in the Facebook uh, in the Facebook group. That was awesome. That was some good. Uh, Good information when life was given out. And one life is going to be on the first episode of Portfolio Power Up. It'll be interesting to see where the market's at by the time that first episode comes out. Because I don't know. It's still a little ways away. And $4 needs to hold up support here. So actually, let's see. I think our downtrend is still kind of going on on this. Still not out of this downtrend. Could not keep climbing. And BKY, BKYI has had a pretty good sell off. Down to 131. So that trend line's cracked. Codex making one of those reverse U shapes, so Codex is probably going to have a pullback. HPI still looks okay. See, AIM still at that $4 area. AIM might crack $4. Well, it did crack right there, but AIM still building a little bit of higher lows on this 10-day, 30-minute, if it can hold up Yeah, it really looks like TLSA is going to sell off here. <coughs> I 
could be a pretty big sell-off too. I mean, we could see this all the way back down to three dollars. But yeah, nothing right now. Everything is definitely looking a little rough. Yeah, it looks like it's going to crack here. So it looks like the biggest rip of the day, well, yeah, probably, I guess you could say, well, I don't know if I, I wouldn't say it's the big, biggest rip, but it was a pretty good rip, though. But this is pretty much the only midday rip that happened was on BKYI, and that was kind of late morning oh yeah TLSA cracking that four dollar mark so I wouldn't be surprised to see this dump off down to three dollars at this point yeah that's probably what's gonna happen there yeah I am still slowly What's IMMB? So when did this happen? This happened. Though this just happened. They just about thirty minutes ago. This had a big rip. Not really sure why. Yeah, everything's looking a little ugly right at the moment, but especially TLSA. And I thought earlier it was going to be out of that triangle, but it did not get out of that triangle. You can see it's still in that triangle, and it still may have this drop off, this descending triangle. Not a big fan of that pattern. This is like it's trying to get back above four. So still kind of testing that four dollar support and the spy with a nice a nice bounce so far. Bounce all the way back up to two seventy five so far. <laughs> a momentary lapse. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one, Daniel B. I got it. It was a good dad joke. I like it. I like I like the dad joke. You got me. So the HTBIX is going to maybe start coming back up a little bit. So TLSA trying to get back above four. Hmm. 
Hmm. So we'll have, to, we'll have to see what happens here this last little bit of the market. BKYI is really selling off. As well. <clears throat> so if you're looking at any swings or anything, AIM you want to close above four dollars, TLSA you want it to close above four dollars. HTBX uh, be better if it closed above 70 cents does anybody else have any potential swings or maybe potential day trades they're thinking about for tomorrow BKYI. <laughs> the TLSA, a little bounce off of $4. So tested $4, but up at four seventeen as of now. How's all of, how's some of the pot stocks doing? Aurora down to 86 cents. Cresco Labs down to three dollars. Huh, this REIT. This marijuana REIT is actually kind of interesting that it hasn't dropped that much in this market crash. It's bounced off this 200 day. That's kind of interesting. Might have to buy water roar at eighty six cents. Oh, and uh, looks like TLS TLSA cracking four dollars again here. Real estate? What are you talking about? I, I don't I don't know about that. That's a little that's a little strong saying cannabis is death. Cannabis is uh it's gonna it's a billion it's gonna be a billion dollar industry if it, it already is. I think it already is, but it's gonna like there's a lot of money in cannabis. There's just a lot that, that has to get worked out. I mean it's still it's still illegal in most of the world, so you know, there's a huge market for it once it's able to tap into all the markets. But cannabis stocks are a little risky because, you know, it's hard to tell which companies are going to survive. So I understand why a lot of people want to stay away from them. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that, but...
Hmm. Everything kind of kind of dropping off here. We got about 15 more minutes to see what happens here for market close. And then we'll call it a day for the stream after market close if nothing is going on. And we'll see what tomorrow brings. BKYI all the way down to a dollar twenty dollar twenty three area. TLSA still trying to hold that four dollar area. If it keeps testing though, it's going to crack. But so far, still trying to hold up. I do think we have a little while before, uh, like I said, I do think the market's going to keep crashing, but I do think we are kind of getting close, close to the end of the coronavirus. I think another week or two, the coronavirus scare is going to die off some. The economy, the the stock market probably is not going to recover quite yet because I think there's more to the stock market dropping besides the coronavirus. But I do think uh, we've only got like a week or two left of coronavirus stocks moving and ripping. Because that's what it kind of what it kind of feels like today is kind of like you know the fact that TLSA didn't rip any more today when they said they had a potential coronavirus vaccine or whatever you know maybe investors are getting tired of trading the coronavirus stocks And then BKYI had nothing to do with the corona the coronavirus and it actually had a good rip today so that's another thing that makes me think that because we really haven't seen there's been uh, let's see Monday and Tuesday for sure there was a lot of stocks with good press releases but they had nothing to do with the coronavirus and they didn't do anything and so BKYI is kind of the first one to kind of outshine a lot of the coronavirus stocks, so that's that's why I'm saying that. I think we I think we may have the rest of this week and maybe next week of this coronavirus stock trend, and then it may die off, and then we might get back to normal. You know, FDA approvals ripping and collaboration agreements and things like that. HTBX actually pulling up back down to 67 cents here.
But that's just my thoughts on everything, on the market and everything. I I could always be wrong because this market is crazy right now and it is hard to call, but that's where I stand on the whole thing. <laughs> what is Outbreak? I don't even know what Outbreak is. I have to check it out tonight and see what it is because I've never, I've not heard of Outbreak. I watch, I watch some Netflix, but not a lot. Yeah, this is definitely, definitely a quiet power hour. Oh, was that paused? <clears throat> oh, it's from the 90s? Hmm. I'll have to check it out. I'll check it out and see what it's about. Big crashes behind the door. I think a pretty good one is coming. So TLSA is testing four dollars once again, and it could be a sell-off right here. This last five minutes. Yeah, you're not you're not wrong. That is a good point. An inactive market is a good signal that the market might be about to crash or have a nice pullback. Because this is pretty inactive. Morgan Freeman's in as well. That's cool. Morgan Freeman's in it. It's probably a good movie. <coughs> yeah, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking. I'm right there with you on that, Daniel B. people get spooked the sell off is going to begin see i think i think the government i, I don't know this for sure I, like I, I don't really have any evidence to back this up but this is just my thoughts i think the government may be telling all the hedges and stuff like that not to dump they might tell tell be telling them to wait and hold on that they're going to try to rebound the market but if those hedge funds, all those hedges that have, you know, millions and billions of dollars in them of stocks, if all of them get spooked and they start dumping, if they say, I'm not listening to the government anymore, we're not losing a bunch of money, then I, I think those hedges will start dumping and that'll really crash the market. And that's the whole reason why I don't think it's happened yet, is I think the government is saying, hey, do not dump your shares out of these hedges. And another thing is these hedges could be slowly making their way out of it. You know, that could be part of the reason of, you know, slowly coming down. 
they be they may be slowly sneaking out of it without the government knowing. I mean, I don't know. That's just that's just my thoughts on it. I have nothing to back that up whatsoever. It's kind of a conspiracy theory, but <laughs> and we're back to the spreadsheet thing again so alright let's see what happens in this last five minutes see if anything does anything you know, we might be in a sideway market for a while if the spy does hold up and doesn't crack these levels this 270 area, the spy and, and the whole entire market might just start going sideways like this. Which in a sideways market, I, I've been I've been in a sideways market before. I think it was uh, what year was it? I want to say maybe it was two summers ago. But it was a sideways market. And there was not any rippers. There was barely any big moves at all, like day trading wise. Like you, you get up every morning, and you just might see a couple of rips in pre market, and then a bunch of sell offs right at market open. And then you have like maybe one stock rip about twenty five cents, and that was the ripper for the day. It was about a, it lasted for like a summer. There was just no big rippers. Like the biggest gainers was like 25, 30% on the day. So if that happens, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to make money day trading because you just, you got to like really lock in quick. Now I don't know if that's going to happen. You know, it's a possibility. The market could just go sideways for a while until. They figure something out. But I don't know. Exactly. That's the you said it in one sentence. It took me several sentences to say, Oh, and TLSA is starting to sell off here right at the last minute. Cracked the four dollars finally, it's down to three three eighty six. AIM up to 420. Kind of right on that trim line. HTBX at 69. BKYI at $1.23. Yeah, so this is starting to sell off pretty hard. Like I said, this. Once it cracked four dollars, it's probably gonna go all the way down to three dollars. Cause the two hundred day is at three dollars, but three dollars should be the bottom of this. I mean it might not be, but it should be. This is the first time this has been over the two hundred day in a while. So, I mean, $3 should hold up as pretty strong support. But, yeah, other than, other than that cracking, that's about the only thing that's happened. TBX right there. <clears throat> so yeah, BKYI is selling off almost back down to a dollar. See, this one I wanted to look at again. NOV in cracking the 200 here. You can see it's been riding the 200. 
Let's see. That's at the nine right there. So we're in post market. Oh, it looks like TLSA tried to jump back up really quick before market closed. So it's right below four dollars. Quick sell off down to three, but bounced right back up. So a quick, quick little bounce. See AIM closing at four sixteen. And HTBX closing right at 70. So nothing, nothing doing anything right now. I don't think we're missing much. Okay. Yeah, shorts covering, yeah. But yeah, I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we're gonna miss much. I mean, it is a possibility some news could come out or something. And uh, let's see. Hold on. Did this just come out? What does this say? Trump to make remarks on coronavirus around eight. CBS building in NYC evacuated due to coronavirus. Why did they have to evacuate it? Let's, oh, they, don't, they didn't say why. I want to know why they evacuated. Yeah, so let's see. That was on the spy. So I don't know if if what he says at 8 p.m. is going to have any bearing on the market or not. But it could. If he comes out and they've got this stimulus package that they're talking about, the stem package is all ready to go and they're ready to put it in to motion right away the market could rebound tomorrow maybe I really I really don't know so if you're curious to what Trump's got to say he'll be on somewhere at 8 p.m. if not I'm sure you will hear about it somewhere on social media or somewhere else but We will see. So, all right, guys. <clears throat> Thank you guys for joining me today. We've had another double stream. Crazy, crazy week so far. Everyone gets 10K checks. Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? That would be a, a, a interesting stimulus package. I don't know exactly where they would get the money for to give everybody a 10K check, but... <laughs> We, I guess the U.S. can go into more debt. We're already, what, $25 trillion in debt or something like that? So what's well, another $10 trillion at this point? <clears throat> make our, we'll make our dollar worth nothing. But, yeah. All right, guys. I think we'll end it here. Appreciate, <laughs> appreciate everybody joining me tw twice today. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll see you. What happens, what Trump's got to say, is the coronavirus still going to be running rampant and scaring everybody and people running around with toilet paper on? Who knows? So we'll find out. Until next time.